Um, unless we ag mutually agree on it in writing, your assignments are all due by the end of day Monday. Um, if you're having difficulty and you want to talk to me about that in lab, we, we can do so at that time. Um, what I had mentioned before is, is what we're going to do. Um, if you have questions either about your project or um, any of the labs that are due, we can talk about them here. Um, knowing that some questions might be better addressed in lab. If not, um, I'll spend at least a few minutes talking about Ajax just to talk about that because that's uh, it's a topic I like to like to at least spend a little bit of time in. So, does anyone have any questions about the labs or the project? Is that a how am I going to do, do what? Um, this is for lab nine. Okay. Because we have an ad, right? Uh huh. I want to do a hyperlink. Okay. Okay. I need a query string to pass it. Yep. Hmm? Well, I'm going to pass a query string, a query string in a hyperlink. Well, we 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 talked about um we, we we've talked uh, the whole semester about how we can program to um, set the attributes of our .NET components, all right? We can put stuff in labels, in other words. We can put stuff in text boxes. We can pull stuff out of text boxes. We can make things visible. We can make things invisible, all right? So there's no shortage of things that we have done uh, in the semester that relates to pointing to something on the page and through our code changing some property or another of it. So whenever you have those questions like that, how do I do this? Obviously that's something that you want to be dynamic, right? I mean you can't static code the car ID, right? Because it's a different car ID each time. So it has to be something dynamic. So we're going to somehow have to associate um, and, and based on something, we're going to have to change the attributes of that link. All right. Whenever you have these questions, and, and this is a good question because um, this sort of hits on um, one of the one of the main messages of this course. All right. And that message is this, uh, and I think Richard has a similar issue with this, right? And, and we talked about it. So. The question is this, if you want to change something on the page, the question is, is what object do you want to change? What attribute do you want to change uh, on that object? And lastly, where do you want to do it? So let's pull up an example that we have here. Let me look through this. And let's look at how we could possibly do it. It is preparing our solution very diligently as we speak. Let's look at Um, let's look at this page. This is as good as any. I won't do the whole thing, but I'll do enough of it that I hope you, you'll get the idea. We have this page, and this page uh, is what we used either for inserting or um, editing a faculty member. And if you remember, we had in the code behind for this, we looked to see if there was an ID. Where is that at? We look to see if there's an ID on the query string, 
If there was, then we retrieved the stuff from the database and, and we populated the fields on the form with it. Otherwise, we didn't. Otherwise, we just started with, it with an empty form. So, let's put a link on this page. Okay? So, let's go and put a hyperlink on this page. And it could either be a hyperlink or it could be a link button. It worked the same in either case. All right? So, there's our hyperlink. I'm going to go and I'm going to give it some text. And maybe this text would be something like, do, 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 you know, add courses for this professor. We're not going to actually go and do that, but we'll go and we'll make a link like, like we could go and do that. Now, let's say the page that we want to call is Add courses .aspx. All right, but as you have to do in your assignment, we're going to have to pass. If this is going to add courses for a particular professor, we're going to have to pass that professor's ID on the query string to it. All right. So really, our URL is going to look like this. I have no idea. What, oh, that's in the way. Of the okay, that's what's going on. So our real URL we want to look like this. ID equals something where the ID is on there. Okay? So the question is is how do we change that? Well, the hyperlink has a number of properties associated with it. One of those properties is a navigate URL. Okay? So, we can go in the code behind uh, for this page, and we can programmatically set that URL to anything we want it to be. Alright? We could set it to, not that this would be terribly useful, but we could set it to Let's see, hyperlink one. We could set the navigate URL to be google.com if we wanted it to be. All right. It's really not terribly useful, but we could do it, right? We could set that property on that of the, we can set that property of this object to anything we want it to be. Right? So we could change it. It used to be add courses.aspx. We could change it to Google if we wanted to. We could change it to Yahoo if we wanted to. We could flip a coin and half the time change it to Yahoo, half the time change it to Google. All right. Um, we could look to see what the, the professor was. Were they a full-time professor? Were they an adjunct professor? And we could link to a page that described what those roles do. All right. We could look to see what department the professor was in and put up a link to that professor's home department. So if they're a business uh, professor, they you, you, a link to the business department page. If they're an engineering professor, to the engineering page. So we can point to that object and point to that attribute and change it any way we want. Well, we don't want to do all those things that I described. What do we want to do? We want to add something on the query string. So how do we add something to the query string? Well, we would say add courses dot ASPX question mark ID equals and then what would we want to do? Well, in this case, and it might be different in your case, but in this case we want to grab the ID on this page's query string. All right. and add that onto the string 
that's going to form that URL. So now we run this. If we look, there's our link, Add Courses for this Professor. If we mouse over it, we see that the URL is faculty list example add courses.aspx question mark ID equals two. So we've successfully added that on, on, on the page. Or if we do another way to do this would be to look at the, do a view source. And we can somewhere in there see that that link is actually for href equals add courses dot ASPX ID equals then the value of that guy's ID. So that's an important thing to remember as you're doing uh, as you're continuing with this. Everything on the page is an object. Everything on the page is a control, and those controls have attributes, and you can manipulate those attributes through your code. That's that's the one big win of using this framework is that not only can we put these controls on the page to maybe make the page easier to create and design and all that, we can pro programmatically um, manipulate them. So we have a link that has to vary a little bit, all right, and we, we go and we, we can vary it this way. Alternatively, I suppose you could pass it as a session variable. You could set a session variable, but this seems to be a better way to do it. Did that kind of answer the question? Yeah. Remember, everything on a page is an object. And, and really, it's a question of what object do I want to change? What attribute do I want to change? And then what comes into play a lot of times is where do I need to make that change? If you remember, um, when we added a dummy value to the dropdown, it mattered where we put that, right? If we put that in the uh, page load event, our dummy item got wiped whenever we retrieve the data from the database. So we put it in the um, bound event, data bound event, or I forget the exact uh, wording for it. In this case, it's pretty straightforward. You want to do this as soon as the page loads, so it's in the page load event. Other questions about this? Oh, yeah, right, right. So if you had an HTML file, let's say, that you were happy with and you wanted to add something yeah, dynamic to. Add. You don't really change any of the images or the layout of the website. Yeah, uh, yeah, it wouldn't be that hard. What you could do would be something like this. Let's, I teach the 216 class, so we should have some stuff in here. Um, let's go and let's grab one of these older examples. I got this web page. All right. 
these are actually I saw in Oberlin. These are origami. And each one of these, and it's a little hard to see here, but each one of these is a single sheet of paper folded. There's no rips, there's no cuts, there's no couple sheets of paper. And it's amazing the stuff that they do with, with them. So here's a bug, here's a bull, here's a dragon, and here's another bug. So let's say I like that page and I want to go and I want to incorporate this into .NET and then maybe do something like add, you know, a list of faculty people to it or something goofy. I don't know, I'm just making something up so, so we could do something. How would I do that? Well, you, there's probably a couple ways you could do that. What I'm going to do is, uh, first of all, I'm going to go and I'm going to copy this stuff into the applications folder. So that would be over here. So I'll go copy it into there. All right. I'm then going to go and I'm going to create a new page. And the one thing I at least have to do is I have to make it an ASPX page if I want to add something dynamic to it. All right. If I literally didn't want to add anything dynamic to it, I could keep it as an HTML page. But typically, uh, at the very least, you're going to have a, a little bit of code that's going to be dynamic on, on almost every page, in which case I would, I would go and, and make it an ASPX page. So I'll go and add a new page, add or new. file I'll create a web form I won't implement a master page just because I don't feel like doing it um, we'll call it gallery the only difference if I implemented the master page is I would cut and paste the code inside of that content placeholder All right, it's going to give me an empty page. There we go. And I can just go in and Open this up. And paste that right in here. I'm also going to go and paste the style sheet file. And there is our gallery ASPX. I somehow messed up the style sheet when I copied it over. Yeah. The, uh, I guess the link in the head. Okay, right. I didn't put the link in the head. That's right. Yeah, that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But but the idea is I was able to pull that in. Now, um, again, if I did do a, uh, if I did do a, and let's let's do that one. If I did make a new page and I uh, inherited from the master page I do about the same thing And the only difference being is I would go and copy this and put it 
in that content placeholder or that content. And now if we did it, again we're going to have a little issue with the style because I didn't bring that over, but you'll see that I have that. Actually, I don't have the issue with the style. That's right, because I overwrote it. And now this is a style for everything. I got it. Now, the question is, well, if we wanted to add some dynamic to it. Well, then, we could just go in and go and do the stuff that, that we've done so far in this class. So I could go and add a SQL data source and a grid view and create a new data source. Actually, I created the data source, that's right. I want to configure it. And just for giggles, we'll put some table on here. Maybe. And then we can bind the grid to it. And we can see on the page, it used to be a static page. We now have that one little piece of dynamic stuff that we're pulling from the database. So we made it, you know, we took it from being a, a regular static HTML page, now it's an ASPX page. Now, there's one more little trick that we can do. Um, and that is, no, uh, if you do that, if you, if you do that, that is if you, if you take a already completed HTML page and convert it, you're going to have HTML tags. You're not going to have the .NET components. All right? So for example, these links that I create on this page are just links. They're not... Uh, ASP.NET hyperlink controls, all right? But that doesn't mean you can't program because for any control you can put a run at equals server ID equals link one, let's say. And then I can go in the code behind for this guy. And I can treat it just as if it was a .NET control. So I can go into the page load event and I can say link one dot href equals and set the property to Google or, or anything else that I wanted to do. So now when I run this, that home link actually is a link to Google. All right. What did I do here just to review? I turned those HTML controls or, or HTML tags into server-side controls simply by putting run at equals server. If you put run at equals server, then it works like a .NET control. It won't work exactly like the native .NET control. In other words, I don't have the same properties that I do for hyperlink, for an ASP hyperlink, but I can at least set some properties with it. And that's a nice thing to do. I wouldn't suggest doing that 
from, from scratch, if you're building it from scratch, use the ASP.NET controls. But in the exact scenario that you described, where you're taking something that's a static site, and maybe you're adding some dynamic functionality to it, that will allow you to, to have the, the ability to go in and code and program those, those other controls. Other questions? Yes? What kind of things would you need to do if, instead of a gallery, you did a, a flash drop interactive file and you wanted to put that on the page, like your syringe? If you, if you want to put a flash, oh, that's easy. Um, let's go. Let me grab out of my. Um, let me grab out of my uh, two fifteen class. A simple flash animation. Um, that's easy because remember there is code to embed a flash document in HTML. All right. And all you have to do is supply the fast document and the code to embed it in HTML and you just put it in there. Remember, with the exception of those .NET, uh, ASP.NET um, server controls, everything else on a .NET page, on an ASPX page, is just plain old HTML. Right? So, let's go look at one of the examples I had. Let's go... What do I want to do? Let me extract this to the desktop. So what do I got to do? I just have to put the flash file in a place that it can find it. So I'll take the SWF file and I'll copy and I'll put that in my applications root folder. So I'm pasting the SWF file, the flash file, into my application folder. And then I can simply go in and, where was it? take this chunk of code, actually I'll take this whole div, this is an HTML file that Flash generates, I'll just, and this is what you use to embed your Flash into an HTML document, I'll just go and paste that right into my gallery Put it down here. And now, when we go and run this, we will get, in addition to all the other stuff we had before, my little flash animation. All right. I just copied the code right from the HTML that Flash generated. Put it in. All right. Because all you have to do is have the server has to have access to where the Flash file is. So I, I did that by simply putting it in my application directory. And the other thing you had to do is um, take the code that embeds a Flash file into a document. And again, Flash generates that for you. So then you just copy that code that embeds it and put it in the, uh, the HTML and you're in business. Remember, with the exception of the ASP.NET controls which get processed and produce HTML, you know, there's just plain HTML on ASPX pages. And so you can, anything you can do in HTML, and in HTML you can also do in ASP.NET and, and bring that in. So whether you're talking about embedding Flash, embedding audio, video, uh, converting an HTML file 
to uh, an ASPX file. You know, all those things are fair game and, and relatively easy to do. Other questions? Yes? I have a question about sitemaps. Sitemaps, yes. I recall you saying there was a way to, like, so they're not just kind of bunching over on top of your text when you have it drop straight down. I, was, I have a sitemap and it's kind of getting in the way of where you can't actually see where what you're trying to, your links are. Okay. Um, the question related to sitemaps, like over overlapping text and making it hard to read, and, and so on. Um, what do you think? How do you think we can we could fix this? What do you think the answer to this one is? Yeah, I know. If you knew you, you wouldn't be asking me, right? Yeah. What is? It? Well, let's put it this way. What? What? In what direction would you go for the answer, Jim? Right. <clears throat> to, to give a more general answer, he, he, you know, he gave a very specific answer to this problem. To give a more general answer is, first thing to identify is, what is that? And that's an aspect of the appearance, right? And the problem is, is uh, if I'm understanding you right, because I think Jim had this problem and it sounds like the same problem that you're having, is that the background color on your menus is transparent, which means that if it, the menu rolls down, you, you can see the text behind it and, and therefore you have a hard time reading the links. So, the question then becomes, well, how do you go and uh, change it so you don't have that problem? Well, again, let's think through this and, and there could potentially even be multiple ways to do this, but I would look at it as the saying, is that a content issue? No, my content is correct. All right. So it's not an HTML issue. It is the way it looks. It doesn't look right because it overlaps on top of each other. Or put differently, the background color is transparent so the, the text leaks through. All right? That's an aspect of the appearance. I don't want it to be transparent. I want it to be something else. So the thing is, is give it a background color. Give it a background color of white or whatever matches your color scheme. Now, the question is then, how do you get to it? And remember, there's, there's three basic ways that you can get to HTML elements on your page to apply style to them. And then you can mix and match these. And there may be a few others as well, but the basic three are you can give a style on an HTML tag. So I can make all my links look the same. I can make all my paragraphs look the same. I can make all my uh, ordered lists, unordered lists. All those things I can make look a certain way. The other thing I can do is I can make an ID look a certain way. So if I give an ID on an element, I can use that ID to point to that element and set the CSS whatever I, I want it to be in my CSS. As Jim said, in this case, probably it's a class. All right? Because probably all of your second level links or first level links or whatever they are have a class in common. In which case you just write a style rule for that class, that would go and, and, uh, and, and set it to that. So we can take a look at it in lab, but in a nutshell, that's what it is. Um, I, I'll just do a real quick example with this. We'll go in, th this gallery page will sort of be our everything page. Let me go and let me put a menu here. And let's orient it horizontally. Alright, and let's look at the items. Let's just add a bunch of dummy items. All right. Hopefully some of these will overlap. All right. Oops, wrong one. And 
right, let's give only back level display. All right. So let's go and run this. And so, yeah, you're kind of running into that there. See as it gets overlaps. So let's look at the HTML for this. View page source. That, by the way, is, is also, um, how do I say this, uh, a, a tip that, that I can give. When in doubt, especially if you're dealing with styling issues, view the HTML source as opposed to the .NET source. Because the HTML source, remember, is what after the server's done everything it, it needs to do, what it's given to the browser. And that's what actually you're going to apply the style to. So if we look at this, all right, we will notice that the class on these links, there's a level 2 class, a level 3 class, a level 4 class, and so on. All right. And what I can do then is go into the style of that page. And I can do something like dot level one background white. In this case, the class is what I'm hooking on to. I notice what the classes are. That element actually had two classes. The one that seemed more relevant to me was the other one, although I guess I could have used the pop-out one as well. And now if we go and run this, we, as we put our mouse over, notice it completely covers up that. It would have helped if I used something other than new item for each name because it's kind of hard to see where one ends and the other begins. Or if I do this even. Let's go and let's not make the background white. Let's make the background um, gray. Now as I put, oh, I did it for everyone. Okay, I don't want to do it for level one. I want to do it just starting at level two. All right, and you see it, it goes and does that. Now mine's kind of goofy the way that I have it oriented, but you get the idea. In essence, it's a styling issue. The reason, with, the reason it's showing up that way is that there's a transparent color associated with it, and therefore you give it a real color and, and you're in business. All right, other questions? I'm not sure if it was your aim or not, but I don't think I'm going to talk about Ajax now. Uh, that's something, it's not very hard to do. There's a couple of extra controls associated with it. And again, remember, remember the whole idea of Ajax is that you are able to combine your client and server code in a different way. Uh, but my guess is, is if you're interested in it, we can talk about it in lab. But I'm guessing more of you are interested in getting your stuff done. So let's, <laughs> let's get up to lab so you have an opportunity to do that. All right, we'll see you up there.